Hey, how's it going? Dave Tootie here, and this is the Lenovo Y720. So the review for this thing is long overdue. They actually showcased this laptop at CES of 2017. So that's like eight months ago. And I finally was able to get my review unit in last week, and I've been playing with it for a while. This thing is one of the cheapest laptops that you can get with a GTX 1060. So this thing comes in at just over $1,000, I think like $1,020 if I'm not mistaken. And the build quality is really good. The paneling is strong all over. It's got aluminum on the outside. The keyboard deck is plastic, but it's very rigid. All the surfaces feel oddly strong for the price point. The hinge uses a design where they're closer together. And I normally don't like this, but they've built it very well this year. It feels very durable. The port selection is better than most gaming laptops at this price point. Lots of USB ports, a couple of display outs, a Thunderbolt 3 port, and an Ethernet jack. The only thing that I would say it's missing is an SD card slot, and if you're curious, the Thunderbolt 3 port is actually full four lane PCIe, not two lanes like some other laptops, which is nice. The internals are accessed really easily, there's just some screws on the bottom. The RAM has a cover of some sort, but remove that and you can replace the RAM and you also have access to both drives as well. There's a two and a half inch SATA and an M.2 SSD. The battery down here has a bit of a weird shape. It's this giant L. It's a 60 watt hour battery and I'm getting around four hours of battery life using the 4K screen. You'll also notice down here a woofer dome. The speakers on this laptop are pretty good. There are a pair of speakers up top to complement that sub. These get really loud, like uncomfortably loud. They sound clean at regular volumes and the bass is present, but the moment you crank it up to even like 60, 70% volume, the distortion is pretty severe. The keyboard has a good layout, I actually like it a lot. The arrow keys are under the number pad, so it makes it very roomy, but it might be weird for people who frequently use a normal number pad. The keystrokes are a little shallow, and I feel like it could be a bit more responsive on the whole. It is a decent keyboard overall, and it has RGB backlighting. It's lit by zones and not individual keys, but at this price point, you're normally stuck with red backlighting, so this is a nice touch. The trackpad is an Elan trackpad, and it's okay, it's not ideal. I know a lot of trackpads on gaming laptops never even get used, most people just plug up mice for playing and stuff, but I still think it could have been better. The surface is nice, and the button mechanism is good, but the tracking doesn't feel consistent to me. I'm getting occasional skips. Another thing that I don't love is the design. Now, I know I mentioned that the build quality is really good, and it is, but the design feels kind of out of place to me. It's got this crosshatch pattern on it, and it's cool that they went for something different than most other gaming laptops, but I don't know, I don't love it. And it's also prone to fingerprint smudges. Now, most of it comes from just the material because it's a matte aluminum. It just shows smudges really readily, but yeah, if that's something that bothers you, be aware. The screen is okay. I'm using the newly released 4K panel here. I've also used the 1080p panel in the past. Both are IPS panels, but don't get very bright. Now, part of the reason why the screen is dimmer like this is because they put this matte coating on it. You can remove the coating. I've seen it done in the past. I've done it before on older Lenovo laptops. Basically, you take a hairdryer, heat it up, peel it off. I'm not gonna do it on this because it's a review unit, but in the past, when you do do it, it does get a little bit brighter just because the material is gone. The bezels on the screen are a little thick on the top and bottom, but for the money, it's kind of expected. And the webcam looks okay. It's a 720p cam, nothing special. Performance on this laptop is solid. It's excellent for 1080p gaming. It'll handle lights and midway titles easily. You'll be way above 60 frames per second on just about any modern AAA shooter. Some open world games can get a bit more demanding, so you might have to lower image quality a little. But in general, this laptop is more than enough for 1080p gaming and it's fully VR ready. Only really demanding games or poorly optimized games like PUBG will need lowered graphic settings. And when I played PUBG on this thing, I only felt comfortable with the frame rates when I put it to low graphics quality. Thermal performance is good. I ran some stress tests and the external temperatures stayed comfortable during those tests as well. Now, originally this laptop had some thermal issues when it first launched. I know that some of the earlier reviews, like the very early units had some issues with external temperatures, but I didn't notice any of that with this unit. For the stock fan settings, like the automatic fans, they're pretty quiet and they cool adequately, but if you put on extreme cooling, it gets really loud. It does help a little bit. I mean, temperatures are a little bit lower it's not really worth it to me though. The extra noise is way too loud. But if you live somewhere warm or you use your computer when you don't have access to air conditioning, that could be really useful. So the Lenovo Y720, this thing gives you some pretty good value for the money. It's heavier than you'd expect, but it's a very well-built laptop starting at just over a thousand dollars. The screen is probably its weakest point. Both the 4K and the 1080p panels feel relatively dim. 
The keyboard has zoned RGB backlighting, shallow stroke on the keys, but it's comfortable to type on. The trackpad uses Elan drivers and there's some occasional tracking issues. Inside, the GTX 1060 and the KB Lake CPU options are awesome for 1080p gaming and are well cooled without the fan getting too loud. The RAM and both drives are easily upgraded if you want, and the battery comes in at 60 watt hours with okay battery life. I'm getting around four hours with the 4K screen. So a GTX 1060 laptop for around $1,000 is a pretty good value. There's two real competitors to this. First is like a broad competitor, which are the bare bone systems like Clevo and Sager. But the other kind of brand name competitor is the Acer Helios 300, which I've reviewed for in the past. They both have black and red gamer aesthetics. I wouldn't call either of them better looking than the other. If you're trying to choose between the two, they're both good. The Y720 has better build quality, and I think on the whole, it's just a more complete laptop. It has RGB backlighting. It's got the Thunderbolt 3 port. It has better thermal characteristics. I mean, it's just got more aggressive cooling. It's heavier. It's got a bigger battery. It's a more substantial laptop. The Acer Helios 300, it's a little bit cheaper, so you're gonna get better bang for your buck in terms of just raw performance, but it is, a, I would consider it a quote unquote cheaper feeling laptop just because it's got more plastic and the whole device is just lighter weight and everything. But seriously, both of them are great. Can't go wrong with either of them. I would go for this one. If you want build quality, I'd go with the Helios 300 if you want just pure value. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.